Hey folks, Pastor Josh here, and we're going to continue our study on Galatians chapter 5. We are nearing the end of the chapter. We have been talking about through the four, four chapters here about how the Galatians were... Uh, the Galatian church was a church that Paul started on one of his missionary journeys. Judaizers came in, started to tell them that, started to, to start confusion and all kinds of things in the church, telling them they had to follow the law as well as as, uh, as their faith and, and all of these things. And Paul heard about this. This was how, how, how uh, important this was. Paul had heard about this and Paul had... Uh, had to write this letter. This is how much, how crucial this was. And and uh, Paul goes from this penned letter, and you can tell from the salutation to so far chapter 4, you can tell the tone here of this letter is that he is, he's upset, he's uh, angry, he's, he feels as though his work there had no no effect. So he, he's writing this letter to try to get them to a place of understanding where they once were. There's also aspects of that as you look at this where he says, where he says that uh, in verse 18 of chapter 4, he says, he says, but it is good to, it is good to be zealous and in a good manner always, and not only when I am present with you, my little children of whom I labor in birth again, again until Christ is formed in you, I desire to be present with you now and to change my tone. So, but, and, and then he goes on and says, but I am displeased with you, for I am displeased with you. So he, he's telling them he's displeased with them. He, he's, he doesn't like what's going on. He, he feels as though his, his teaching has had no effect or has had little effect that they would turn away and go back to their roots. And we talked in the last video about how there's no precedent of God being okay with someone who has started off in faith and then went back to their old life and, and, and God accepted that and God said you're okay and you're going to heaven. That is not that is not a possibility. That is not something that God uh, does or God allows. So, um, and there's no precedent in scripture for that. So, that's where we, we are and that's what Paul's whole, so far that's the whole crux of this letter. And Paul gives them uh, allegories about the, the new covenant versus the old covenant and he, he tries to get them to understand and then we get to chapter 5 talks about he talks about uh, Christian freedom talks about uh, freedom in Christ liberty in Christ and how we're not to use that liberty in ways to to live our own way and as a matter of fact he says this he says um, you you brothers have been called to liberty only only do not use liberty to give an opportunity to the flesh but be but by love but by love serve one another so in other words don't give this don't don't use this liberty as a way of saying okay I'm born again now I'm gonna go live my own life or live the way I want to say don't do that that's not what you're supposed to do so then he's now now he's talking in verse 16 following down to the end of the chapter, he's talking about spiritual fruit versus fleshly works. Spiritual fruit and fleshly works. And then, and this is what he says. So, so if you've been turning there, I hope you're there. Chapter 5, verse 16. And we have, uh, we have one more chapter, and it's not very long. It's only 16 verses, 18 verses. Looks like 18 verses. I thought it was a 6, it's an 8. But 18 verses, and this chapter is 26 verses. And... We're in the last section, spiritual fruit and fleshly works. So verse 16, following down, says, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts, lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that please that you please. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So he's giving them some understanding. Now, in, in context of the whole book, see, I used to read this and I said, oh, that's a great passage of scripture. But in context of the whole book, this is a teaching thing. Teaching thing for him. They, he, he, he views it, Paul views this as 
the Galatian people doing things as works of the flesh. Okay, he says, so then walk in the Spirit. If you had to tell them to walk in the Spirit, obviously they're not. So they're walking by the flesh. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And, and that, is, that, is, that is a great passage for you and I today to remember. But in the context of this letter, they are, they are obviously walking according to the flesh. So he's saying, so walk, so then walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So he's giving them a teaching again. He's like reteaching them the gospel. Okay, so you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts, for the flesh lusts against the spirit. So they're warring against each other. We talk about this in Romans. The flesh and the spirit war against each other. <clears throat> and he says, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. So they're warring against each other. These are in opposition to one another, so, so that you may not do things that you please. So another thing, so what he's saying here is this, the, reason the, the reason the spirit is busting against the flesh and the flesh again, busting against the spirit is because it is a war in your, in your spirit. It is, a, it is a war for your soul in your spirit. Okay? Understand that Paul is saying that if you walk according to the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you struggle in that, He's telling the Galatians, if you struggle in that, if you give place to going back to bondage because of the law that the Judaizers are giving you, if you go back to that place of bondage, then yes, you're going to have problems with walking in the Spirit. You're going to have problems with walking in the Spirit. Because he says, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. Because if you, if you feed that lust, if you feed that fleshly side it's going to win against the spirit but if you feed the spiritual side and you feed and you and you give god place and you give god that place in your life that will give you the ability to win against the flesh that's why he says say then so then walk in the spirit so you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh feed that flesh feed that lust or spiritual side and starve that fleshly side Okay, feed the spiritual side, starve the fleshly side. That's just, that's essentially what he's saying. Walk away from what you're doing. Step away from it. Cast out those things. That's what he said in in the, in, in chapter five at the beginning of the chapter. He said those things you need to step away from. Step away from those things because. That's going to cause problems. He says, he says right there in verse 7 of chapter 5, he says, You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This, persu this persuasion does not come from him who calls you. So if you are feeling as though this teaching or a, a certain teaching or a certain thing is, sounds good to you and you're going to follow that and not follow this, not follow the word, that does not come from God, and that's what he's, he's, he's reiterating that here. Feed the, feed the spiritual side, and you'll starve the flesh. Focus on the scripture. Focus on your Bible. Focus on spending time with the Lord. You'll feed the spiritual side, and you'll starve the flesh. Now, he says that, these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. If you're, if you're following the spirit, if you're feeding the spiritual side of your life and starving the flesh, the things that you want to do, you want to do, aside from what God's called you to do, things you want to do, aside from those things, you will you will not do those things that you want to do. You'll follow the spirit of God. You'll follow the, the spiritual side of you. You will you will follow Jesus. You'll follow Jesus. You, you understand what I'm saying? You'll follow the Lord. You won't follow the fleshly side. Okay. 
They're in opposition. The spirit is warring against the flesh so that you'll follow the spirit. And the flesh is warring against the spirit so that you'll possibly follow the flesh. But it's whatever you choose to yield yourself to in a moment of weakness or, or whatever. What you yield yourself to, then you are you are you are spirits to obey. You are you are slaves to obey. Okay? The scripture says. Now he says here, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the bondage of the law. We talked about this. What what what's the law and what's the law's purpose? Today in 2016, 2017. What's the law's purpose? The law's purpose is to show us that we need a Savior. The law's purpose is to show us that we're a sinner and that we need a Savior. Once it's done that, once the law has done that, and we, we have the faith to believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the law has done its work. The law has done its work. Okay? So, so we are then, we are then not under the law once we have had our faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what he's telling them. When when you had your when you had your faith in Jesus Christ, you were not under the law. Galatians, you were not under the law. You were under the law of the Spirit. The, the law did its work in you by realizing you realizing that you needed a Savior. Now you're under the now you're under the Spirit. Now you're under the the second covenant of God. Okay. By going back to being in bondage of the law, you're basically sinning. Okay? He says, Now the works of the flesh are revealed, which are these, adultery, sexual immorality, impurity, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, rage, selfishness, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you as I previously warned you that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God so understand understand if we his whole context here this must have been something going on part of the Judaizer way of thinking this must have been something going on because he mentions it because he says I warn you as I did once before so he's bringing it back up. So this must have been something going on. And it, and it speaks to us today as believers. As believers. It speaks to us today. These things, if we do these things as a practice of who we are. I'm not saying struggles. I'm not saying, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get, to get victory over this particular thing. But I'm talking about you feel it's okay to do these things and be a Christian. That's what, was, that, that's what was happening with the Galatian people. They had begun to adopt some of these things, and it was okay for them to be in bondage under the law. It was become who they are, and become who they are, and it was fine. This thing with us, with us today, these kinds of things, if they were doing them, then they were okay with it eventually, evidently because Paul had to bring it out again and warn them against it again. So it's a warning for us. If we are if we are taking part in these things, in these things listed, and we say, "Well, I'm okay. I'm going to heaven. I gave my heart and life to Jesus 20 years ago. It's fine. I'm good. I'm all good." No. No. Sorry. Not not true. The enemy's lying to you. Right here it says, and this is gospel, this is scripture, this is this is not my personal doctrine, this is not my personal thinking, this is scripture. All of these things, I warn you as I previously warned you that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You understand? I warn you as I previously warned you that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God of God. That is scripture. Not my words, God's word. So if we think that this is okay, and it's okay with God, and, 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 and Jesus is okay, 
with it, then the enemy's lying to you, and you need to check your salvation. So, don't mean to be harsh. Don't need. Don't mean. Don't mean to be like. I'm coming down on people, whatever. This is the truth. This is the gospel. This is the word of God. We need to get there, get to it. We need to get to it. We need to know the truth. And in the context of this book, as it plays out in 2016, 2017, it has relevance today. But for the context of the book, Paul is saying, step away from that sin which you once that you just came back to and get back to God and here's why and th and that is something that we need to listen to as well as believers as people as believers and as people we need to listen to them the world today will tell us oh it's okay to do this it's okay to do that it's okay to be like that it's okay to be like this it's fine but what does the Word of God say right here right here Galatians chapter 5 what does it say I read it to you twice what does it say let that sink in check yourself I check myself every day believe me I'm not perfect I'm not coming down to anybody I'm not perfect um, check yourself I'll check myself I always do and let's see where we're at and let's go from there so until next time it's Pastor Josh God bless.